Hey, what's going on? Coach Luca back here with the Vigor Life Podcast. Uh, we've been gone for a while. Uh, we had some trouble with our RSS feeds, but we are back. And today's special episode, special guest. Um, you're going to want to hear this story because he's a little nutcase like me. And that's always a, a pretty uh, intriguing and interesting thing. Hey, before I go into this episode, though, I just wanted to touch base real quick because this podcast is going to come out probably about four weeks out from the Vigor Ground Summit. As of right now, we have 47 tickets left. That's it. Uh, so when this comes out, probably be less than that, but maybe there'll be some left. So remember, like once they're gone, they're gone. Guys, Vigor Ground Summit, uh, you can check it out at VigorGroundSummit.com forward slash home. Uh, the best lineup of speakers we've ever had in the Pacific Northwest, possibly anywhere as far as like a fitness lineup uh, of speakers anywhere in the U.S. Honestly, it's an incredible lineup. Check it out. This early bird is still going on like the last days that you can get on this before the, uh, the price goes up 100 bucks. With that said, I'm going to leave that alone, all right, because we got better things to get to, at least right now. So I wanted to introduce um, Dawson, who uh, actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig into. I, I want to start with, first of all, like a little bit of backstory, because I know so like I know some, but I don't know everything. Um, but this guy is, is, is uh, going to start and uh, attempt and I believe complete um, seven world records. Four beating four existing ones and, right. and three completely new ones that three haven't been, never, been never been done before. Never been done before. Yeah. And like, and I'm, we'll get to like why why <laughs> the hell you're even doing this and why you're so crazy. <laughs> but but before we get there, I kind of I want to backtrack because you know what brought you to first of all like a little bit of your background, but like what brought you to this place where you're like all right, um, you know, because now you, you run some businesses and they they do well and. You're like, all right, this is I'm going to dedicate my life right now to this because, like you said, you know, for a year and a half, like this is all you've been doing and training right. for. Um, but tell me, like, where, you know, it, your background from the standpoint of I know that you played, um, you know, sports uh, at a pretty high level. And but what led you from from there to your career to now coming to this place where right. you want to complete these records? I, I, that's a great question. I tell you, I'll, I'll try to I'll basically consolidate about 20 years down into you know a minute or two. Is, I can't do that. So good job, good job on that, my buddy. It's <laughs> that is like a, is after college. I played. Uh, uh, I tried to play pro football for a little while. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I you know went around and had you know had tryouts and waivers and all that. Never made an active roster, but I did that for a few years. And then after that, I got involved in investment banking. So about the last fifteen years, uh, I've been in investment banking, based in Los Angeles, doing mergers and acquisitions. And I'm currently a managing director with a bank now. Uh, you know, that was going along well. It afforded me a nice life. But I'm telling you, is, is as it went on, just more and more, I felt this sense of something's missing. I didn't have a sense of purpose about my life. And about three years ago, uh, I lost two people very close to me, pretty close together. And I just knew that that was a turning point in my life, that, that something needed to change. And that was kind of the, pres the precipice of the change. So with that, I traveled to Nepal and uh, spent three weeks hiking alone around Mount Everest. And during that time, I had no TV, no radio, no music, no communication with people, no nothing. And it was just just hiking and, and reading and writing and just trying to get back and understanding, you know, kind of what was going on. And, uh, and during that time, I just I experienced a lot. I went through a lot, had a lot of breakdowns, a lot of tears, just a lot of kind of reconnecting with myself and came to understand that the reason I'd been so unhappy and so unfulfilled for so long that I wasn't living with any sense of purpose whatsoever, that I had all the material stuff that I wanted. I had, you know, the friends and the trips and the cars and the, you know, whatever you want to call it. But I, there's this, the, this, the sense that I'd felt kind of growing inside of me for so long was emptiness because I didn't have a sense of purpose. Like, what was I doing every single day? It just, it didn't matter and it wasn't fulfilling me. So I came to understand that. And then over the next, and, and prior to that trip, I'd never been mountain climbing before. I'd never really was, been. That's what I was doing. Yeah, ask not you, like, zero. What, what was the, like, the zero. reason that you went for a hike? If, just, if, if someone had, if you'd come to me at that point and said, yo, let's go climb a 20,000 foot mountain, I would have found a new friend. Because that <laughs> sounded terrible for a lot of reasons. It just, it just so happened that a friend of mine uh, had gone to base camp a couple years before. He and I had dinner, and he just kind of expressed what he had gone through and mm -hmm. what it meant to him. And I was like, hey, I need something to change. And as soon as I experienced this second loss, literally three weeks later, I was on a plane by myself to Nepal. Wow. And that just kind of got it started. And when I was over there, when you're in that area of the world, you're going to climb mountains. It's just there's no road. There are literally no roads. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to go somewhere, you're walking. They're like, all right, you know, it's three days walk that direction. And that's what you have to do to get around. So I just I fell in love with it. And in, in combining that with saying, hey, 
I need to live with a greater sense of purpose about me. Uh, they just kind of culminated together, combined together. And over the next year and a half, uh, you know, I learned about the seven summits, which is the highest peak on each of the seven continents. Mm -hmm. And over the next year and a half, I quickly climbed three of them. I don't, I'm not good at doing things in, in long, long term. It's when I get something in, in my mind, I, I want to go after it. This is one thing it. I know about you. Yeah. yeah it just, I, I, I'm all in. I don't yeah. do well with, hey, I'll do something one year, then something a couple years. It just, that's not how I work. I don't enjoy that. Uh, and then when I was on these climbs, what I came to understand was living with this sense of purpose means it's got to be about more than just you. Okay. And, and you've got to apply your passion, your purpose ultimately to help others. And if you're not, if you're not applying it in that manner, then in my opinion, you're on the wrong path. So it was on these climbs. I slowly put in place. Maybe there's a way to combine things I was passionate about to ultimately help others. Mm -hmm. So with that, about the, over the last three years, the idea for Dawson's Peak, you know, our, our 501c3 yep. kind of came to be. And in about a year and a half ago, we finally got recognized as 501c3 uh, to where, you know, our, our mission is to inspire personal transformations by pushing the boundaries of human capability. Essentially, we want to host large scale global expeditions where people can say, hey, if this person's climbing an actual mountain or they're crossing an actual ocean, I can climb the mountain in my life or I can cross the ocean I need to cross where they're drawing parallels between what we're doing and what they can do mm -hmm. to live lives with greater purpose where now they're affecting not only themselves, but their families, their friends, their communities, and we all you know lift everyone together. I love that, man. So in, in, a, in a nutshell, that's kind of what the driver was, you know, where we are today. And then going forward, you know, the, the, the project you mentioned, which is called Project 7 for Soldiers, yep. it's our inaugural project. This is not a one and done for us, is we want to grow as an organization to where each year we work with multiple athletes. It just so happens that I'm the athlete on this current project, but we're going to have multiple athletes doing multiple expeditions and raising money and awareness for multiple third party charities, organizations, or other worthy causes. So this is just a start for us. Gotcha. And so real quick, going from, I mean, cause obviously you, you, this happened very, very fast. <laughs> you went from like, I never hiked the mountain yeah. to now, like, how did you decide on something? I, cause I'll come back to like what I love about this, which is, you know, purpose connecting something like this to, uh, donating and creating something of, that has social impact, which right. I, I'm very, very hardcore. Uh, as, as my belief system is like business should not just be for profit, which it should be right but it should be do doing good in the world, but it should have a social impact. Right. And more and more, I believe this, but I'll come back to that. I, I, I wanted to kind of like dig into a little bit, like, how do you go, you know, cause I didn't know like that you, you really didn't have a lot of experience with any of this stuff. Like I said, uh, I mean, let's just call these extreme adventures, right? right? But how do you go, look, I'm going to go to North pole, the South pole, the seven biggest summits right. in the world. I'm going to fly around the world. Like I'm going to like, how, do, you know, how do you pick number one, those seven, right? How the fuck do you just go like, <laughs> all right, look, one of these is crazy, but like, let's let me do <laughs> seven of these things. Like how, it, at what point in time, I mean, uh, you know, did you smoke a, con, con, a good amount of like weed or take some mushrooms? <laughs> Shit. I'm trying to figure out how did you get to that? Like that, this is what right, I'm doing. Right. And, and the mindset behind, and we'll talk more about the preparation right. for this, man, because like this is, this is some challenging shit. But you know, at what point in time we're like set on this is what I'm going to do, and I I can do, it and I believe I can do this stuff. Like, how did that come about? You know, it 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 kind of ties in some things we we're talking about earlier. It's kind of a to a degree it was very quick, but then to a degree it was kind of a slow progression. Mm. So when I went to base camp, I thought I was doing something. I'm like, hey, I'm an adventurer. This is some crazy stuff. And then when I was there, I quickly found out that it's it's com on a relative scale. It's like staying in the parking lot while the real climbers were going up up the mountain. <laughs> you know, so so I was like, this really, in the grand scheme of things, is 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 not much. And then when I was there, I found out about the seven summits, which is the highest peak on each of the seven continents. And then I found out, you know, about the, kind of the lower climbs, which would be like Mount Elbrus, Kilimanjaro, Aconcagua, stuff like that. So I start on these climbs, and when you're there. Then you just start to see, you start to see gradually there's just, there's more and more and more that you can be doing. And I remember being on Aconcagua, I heard about a guy named Richard Parks, who was the first person to ever complete the Explorer's Grand Slam, mm -hmm. which is the Seven Peaks, North Pole, South Pole in a single year. And I just thought that's absolutely insane. Nobody can do that. And I called bullshit when I first heard it. And then come to find out, you know, it's true. And it's just, you, you see what you're capable of. You see what other people have done. And you just kind of start slowly building this stuff together 
as you gain more and more experience. But in my case, all did that. Ex- you, quick, real quick, did yeah. you did you stu- like did you go and uh, and research all of it? You know what I mean? It's been did that. Not, give yeah. You, did no, that give you some of the? the no, the, really, it, it was just meeting people on the mountains and mm-hmm. talking with people on the mountains. Is is literally when I was in in base camp, you know, and I talked to a guy. He's like, "Oh, I'm going to Kilimanjaro next." And to be honest with you, my my question was, "What the hell's Kilimanjaro?" I'd mm-hmm. never even heard of Kilimanjaro. <laughs> And then when I'm on Killy, I hear about something else. And when I'm somewhere else, I hear about something else. And it's just as you're around these people that are doing these things, around other people that are doing them, you get more and more kind of initiated uh, into the program and just learn about people who are doing more. And just it opens your mind about what your capabilities are, what human capabilities are, and you're trying to start marrying the two, you know, kind of together. And then, like I said, is I'm not good at long term. I'll climb a mountain this year, then I'll climb a mountain in three years and another mountain. It's just, I'm, I, I, I'm not programmed that way. And um, I tell you, I've just, I've fallen in love with it. And when I started looking at, at trying to do this is I knew that I didn't have it in me to climb this stuff over 10 years. That, that just, that didn't interest me. So it had to be something more accelerated. Uh, so far, five people have ever done it in a single year, the Grand Slam. So I'm trying to become the sixth person. And then um, so far, two of them have done it in about six months. So I knew if I could do it in six months, that leaves me, what do I do with another six months? Maybe there's some more stuff that I can do. And I've been a pilot for about eight, nine years now. And so I was like, well, maybe I can incorporate something to do with, you know, with being a pilot. And then, you know, I've ridden motorcycles my entire life. So I was like, well, maybe there's a way I can, it just, it is slowly kind of, well, you just kind of keep sliding a little bit, sliding a little bit. And then I sat back before I knew it, it basically had built itself. I didn't sit down in the beginning and say, Hey, what kind of crazy shit can I kind of mash up together? It was just kind of like, you know, this looks good. I was like, but is that, maybe I can do more. Maybe I can, you know, and this basically, it kind of slowly came together like that kind of organically. But but those, those two things that that I didn't know was like, you have the skill set of flying a plane. So then that was like, oh, well, okay, what what can I in that sector push the boundaries on? And then like, oh, I I love riding motorbikes. Well, cause like, cause go through real quick the other, like I said, yeah, it, it maybe doesn't have to be a, but like, what what is the seven? Yeah, just that you're I'll keep. To break? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it very very short. Is so it's it's first is going to be the Explorers Grand Slam, which as you mentioned is climbing the seven summits, which is the highest peak on each of the seven continents, and then trekking North Pole South Pole. That that's the EGS. And then you doing it in less than six months will make you one of three people that have ever done that. Yeah. Correct. So so far five people have ever done that in a single year, uh, and so far the the two shortest are, are right at right at uh, six and a half months and below. And you're trying to beat that. Well, right? and, and yeah. I'm not going to beat that. I'll be somewhere around six and a half months. Gotcha. I'll be, I'll be kind of right gotcha. in there. Okay. I'm not, I won't set a record on that. Okay. Uh, that's currently held by Colin O'Brady. Uh, I did it, I think it's 142 days, which in Colin's a professional endurance athlete. I've got no business trying to touch that, but that, you know, that, that's that portion of it. Then when I come back, uh, I'll be flying a plane around the world, a single engine plane. Then after that, we'll be uh, rowing a boat across the Atlantic ocean. And then the last thing uh, will be riding a motorcycle across the Mojave Desert. Let's pause there for a second. <laughs> Just take that in there for a second. I mean that. So you know, with that said, okay, how like because th- that's such a big undertaking that, and I and I know like I mean a lot of this, the, the time that you've been here, we've spent talking about training and uh, you know I would say how you're training and some of the obstacles and like what to push through. But those are very very I mean. Very, very different things, right? And um, I so, certainly need different. I mean, the first part, obviously, just is I would say physically the hardest. I mean, right. degree on that. Yeah. But, um, you know, how do you prepare for all that? And like, are you, because uh, because I know you have coaches and, and, and help on the side of this, like the physical part of right now, the climbs and everything else associated with it. But have you even started strategizing, prepping, structuring this whole thing of, of how you roll? How do you go to North and South Pole? How do you fly the plane around the world? Like all of those things. Like how are you going about this? You know what I mean? Strategically right. in, in your head. You know what I mean? It's yeah. That's a good question. It's there's all the physical preparation, but the mental preparation and logistics are are more than the physical. Hmm. Is because once you're actually on the mountain and you're and you're climbing and you're to the poles and you're trekking, it's once you have a certain degree of competency and skill, you can get it done. But it, it, it's getting there and the logistics behind that and then kind of the mental preparation, which is which is honestly the most difficult part. And what I, what's helped me is I do a lot of visualization. It's I mean, just day in and day out when I when I'm training in the gym 
or I'm, I'm climbing, you know, my, my mountains that I climb in my training regimen mm -hmm. is I don't, I'm not climbing that mountain in my mind is I'm climbing Everest. I'm climbing Denali. I'm climbing all these different mountains. Uh, so I'm not in the Sierra Nevadas. It's, you know, I'm in, I'm in Nepal when I'm doing this kind of stuff. And it also is I've surrounded myself with some great people. You know, a very good friend of ours, Jay Jablonski, who's the director yep. of operations for Dawson's Peak. We're working with two uh, incredible charities, Merging Vets and Players, Hope for the Warriors, where 100% of our net proceeds is going to benefit them. It's just, it's about building a teamwork. It's about building a community around this to where it's just not me. It's not one person going out and doing something by myself for myself, but rather it's a, it's a team effort put on by everyone to help, you know, to help everyone. Would you say, I mean... Cause it's like, I know you're nonchalant, like you're kind of like me, you know, where, where it's just like anything is possible, but you know, cause you're like, Hey, the physical part is not that challenging. I, mean, I, I would, I would right. obviously counter you on that yeah. thing. It's fucking challenging, <laughs> but, but it, but it is, you know, with the, the first thing that we talked about was like, Hey, for a year and a half right now, like you have basically not missed a training session right. every day, which right. is bananas. Um, but that's the preparation part of it. Um, you know, cause that's the one thing I, I, I I'll say like, th this is a massive undertaking, but right off the bat, as we're having a conversation, man, when I'm listening to you, I'm like, Oh shit, like, man, you, you're, you're structured to the T and pre right. you're pre prepared and like, you know, planned out to, to do this thing, which I think is a huge lesson. Um, but first of all, let, let me, let me ask you about your mindset around all this. All right. Do you, first of all, do you ever, you know, I mean, taking this on is like, Holy shit. Do you ever like in your mind go like, what if, like, what if I fail or like, what if I don't do it? What if you, you know, we talked about like different fears and stuff like that, but does that even come to, 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 do you think about it? I, I'll be honest with you is, is it's in there and to what degree it's in there, to be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure. And every once in a while it pops in my mind, like, yeah, what if I fail? What if I fail? But it's, it's, this thing is, is so big and there's so much riding on this and I've, I've dedicated so much time and energy and resources and attention to this that I can't allow myself to think about that is, is what I've discovered with this is you only have a finite, finite amount of energy and of time and of resources. And it's up to you to, to, to dictate and decide where you're going to put that energy. And if I sit back and I'm just worrying about what if, what if, what if, you know, what if this thing fails, mm. it's not, it's not helped me achieve my goals. So it's, I mean, is, is, it, it may sound easy, but it's not. It's kind of a learned, a learned technique that I've come up with. That is, I put that out of my mind. Is all I know is if is I just got to go out there, perform the best of my abilities, and I'm not focusing on the end. Is I'm focusing on the process because all I literally all I can control is the next step, the next breath, the next you know getting the next hour of work in, and I worry about the rest of it later or some of it I just I put out of my mind. I'm like, if I take care of what I can take care of, the rest take care of itself. Mm. Yeah. And the thing is, and that honestly, you know, that's the secret to success right there. It's funny, like earlier when we talked about, you said, you know, the the the, the fear that you have is because it's interesting. Like I think we all have fears, but it's like how do you dictate and direct fears, right? Like, but the fear that you have is of not doing everything that you could to prepare, right? Like and put in your maximum effort, right? Not the fear of failure. Big difference, no. right? Yeah. Like, and so I mean, big difference. Sounds like it, it's 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 small, but it's actually really really big. Of like where. Like, I mean, obviously, fear, fear dictates our, our behaviors. Now, you can make it dictate a behavior that's positive, right, that leads you in a positive direction versus if you're, you're constantly thinking about, like, fuck, what if I fail? What if this happens? What if that happens? It usually makes you back off or it makes you, like, uh, stay more secure, right, instead of courageous. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. So that's, that's, that's interesting because, I mean, we, we didn't, you didn't say it right now, but earlier you said it. I was like, oh, that's, you know, it's interesting of what... You know, because most people, when they listen about like, well, I'm going to fly around the world in a plane, then I'm going to go to these these mountains and like that are the highest peaks in the world. I'm going to go to North and South Pole, and, and it's like, fuck, fear of everything that could go wrong. Yeah. But you're really just like you have a fear of not doing the best that you can, right? And putting in yeah. All the work that you can to 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 basically, it's like, hey, if I did everything that I can, like that's that's all I can do. Ex exactly. Look, you know I think there there I think people are motivated two different ways primarily. You know, and a lot of mm -hmm. people either love to win or hate to lose. And I hate to lose. I, I, Same. Yeah. I don't. I don't give a shit about if I win. I'll. I, I don't care because I'm supposed to win. If if I lose and I fail, then we got a problem. So that that's that's what motivates me, you know. And with that, it, it's it's, I. I don't want to. It's just as long as I do everything I can possibly do, that that's how I measure myself. 
is every single day that I put that work in to where you, you know when you're bullshitting yourself. You know when you're getting a rep. You know when you're doing this, when you're doing that. And I, all I just is every single day, every single rep, every single, literally every single step, every single breath, did I get everything out of that I possibly could. And I know if I do that in my training, that when it comes to time to perform, whether I will, whether I won't, all I know is I prepared as much as I possibly could for it to put myself in a position of success. And you know what? That's a great lesson. I, I want to kind of like stop you there because I think this is really important because you're doing something that there's so much shit that's completely out of your control. It's out of my, exactly. I mean, and, but from, that, that's helped me. Yeah, yeah no, abso exactly, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, but if you, you talk about this. I mean, like the weather, the conditions, the yeah. I mean, how many things could write this out of your control? Right. And for, you know, because I always like to relay the message of, you know, hey, whoever's watching this, like you may not go, you know, go climb Everest tomorrow. But but it's but what you know, if this approach to life where you don't, you know, we all get stuck in this. Right. You start worrying about stuff you can't control. Right. And I, I do this still to this very day, pretty frequently when I stress out and freak out, I put a paper, a piece of paper down. I write can't control, can't control. And I write it down, you know, and it's like, oh, I can't control this. Fuck it. You know, I can't control it. And what I can't control, I'll start writing next to it. Like, what are the things that I can do? Because it gives me power. Like, a, all right, I can't do anything here, but here's the stuff that I can do. And I think that's very, very valuable because, like, you're going just, I mean, just just about as much as not having control of a per the person can have, right. like, from these obviously crazy conditions. And, like, you're zoned in on, like, look, whatever happens there, that's not, not, not nothing that I can do anything yeah. about. But, like, how can I respond to this? You know, and how can I adjust to this to, to make this stuff happen? I think that's a great point. And honestly, looking back at, at putting this thing together now, it's probably a little bigger than it should be. To be quite honest with you. Like, here's my question, because I, I feel like business is like this, right? I'm like, if I knew all the things when I started, yeah, you probably would have exactly, like, yeah. that, right? <laughs> and then you kind of, but then you start and you kind of go along and... But it, but it seems like that, you know, that's why I asked you the question, that, like, what made you pick all that? And you're like, well, it didn't happen like that. Yeah. I, wanted, I, went, I went with the first, I'm going to do this. And then yeah. you start building on it because at the beginning, maybe it would have been so big that you wouldn't, you would have been like, ah, exactly. I don't even know yeah. if I can do this. Yeah. Looking right. at it now, I, I kind of like, well, this could have been a little bit smaller. And for, for various reasons. I'm telling you right now, I get, like when you go on the site and you read it and like, I'm an adventurous yeah. person and I'm like. Jeez, that's a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, crazy, it's, you know? it's, it's it's hard also communicating because we want people to get excited about this. We want people yeah, to get involved yeah, in absolutely. it because, again, this is not about me. This mm -hmm. is about building an organization which ultimately can help others mm -hmm. live with purpose, get more out of their lives, be more fulfilled, have better families and relationships, you know, all that kind of stuff, but also uh, creating or um, generating money and resources for our charitable partners. Mm -hmm. So some of this is too large or it's on the cusp because it's hard to communicate to get people to understand the scope of everything is part of it. But then also to your point, there's so many things I can't control, but to a degree, what's helped me is because there is so much out of my control, it's helped me hyper-focus or, or almost made me hyper-focus on what I can control. And what mm -hmm. we talk about a lot of times with, with my friends and advisors on the project is kind of like this little triangle in front of you. We, we almost call it the three-foot rule. So literally, is I just focus on what is exactly in front of me immediately, and especially I do this when I'm climbing, because whatever is going on an hour from now, I can't control. Whatever happened an hour from now, I can't control. Mm -hmm. All I can control is who I am in this moment, the three feet around me, how I'm responding, and if you, if you take that little bite where it's just moment by moment by moment where you're maximizing, you know, your attention to detail, your performance, the, the, how genuine you are in your effort, the level of your effort, it's all that little bit adds up and adds up and adds up. Because if you sit there and you're worrying about what's going to happen two weeks from now or an hour from now or a day from now or is there a storm going to come, you, you, it's not going to do you any good. You know, all that kind of stuff is completely out of there. How do you do, what, like, some, something that... It definitely intrigues me because you're going to be spending a, a, a lot of time uh, by yourself. Right. Now, even when you're training, you're doing this. But like, you know, now we're talking about like, I mean, you're going for months doing these things with with a lot of, I would say, um, alone time in very, very lot, dangerous yeah. places. Oh, like, yeah. how, have you have you thought about that and like dealing with that, the, with the mental side of that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I mean, I love being in nature. I love going on long hikes. As long as eight to ten hours, no problem. But we're yeah. talking about some other level shit, you know, yeah, I mean, when yeah. it comes to that. Like, one, are you preparing for that? Two, you know, have you thought about that? Like, the, the, um, because it, I feel like challenges like this has so, I mean, you, you were saying about it. There's, yeah, there's a physical component to it. 
but the mental component right. into it is 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 so big. And here's I'm gonna use an example in, in real uh in real life. I found really intriguing, you know, that um the majority of elderly people actually don't this was a UK study by the okay. way, but it's similar in the US, that most of them don't talk to anybody uh for within a week. Like for a week they literally don't see or talk to anybody, uh -huh. right? And I think this is uh over seven years old or something like that. And so a guy in the UK was like, wow, that's fucking uh, in, very um, intriguing and amazing and it's sad. So he did an experiment and he was like a 20 something year old guy and ended up going like, OK, I'm not going to leave my apartment because that's most pe older, older, right. older people don't. And I'm not going to call people. I'm not going to do any of that. And by day three, he nearly fucking lost his mind. And he, you know, and it, but it made him go like, holy shit, like we need to spend more time you know, interacting with the elderly because it makes, I mean, it, it's, it's hard on them, like stressful, anxious, all these different things, right? Sad and alone. Um, and the reason I said that is because I, that is true. You know, like imagine not, you know, being around anybody now and you're, you know, you're going somewhere where you, sure, you do have, you have a focus, right? But how do you, you know, how do you deal with that? Like, man, where it's like you have a, you have a shitty day or there's a fucking storm and yeah. you want to hug somebody. You know what I mean, and it's like, it's not happening. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, what, what are some things that, that I, I would say either you're working on to address that or some things that you're thinking through, uh, you know, when that's going to happen? Right. Because yeah. it's, it's going to happen. No, it, it, it's a great question is, is uh, you know, one is, is I'm good by myself. Is, mm -hmm. I've always been good by myself. And, you know, I, as much as I enjoy being around friends and family and community and all that, I enjoy a lot of alone time. It just it's part of me. It's part of who I am, and so I think that kind of helps you know in it's the like process. The fuck yeah. away from <laughs> but I, that's why I'm really yeah. doing this, by the but way. It's, it's <laughs> honestly is is I think that's part of the challenge because mm -hmm. they they say that the hardest thing for someone to do is to sit quietly with themselves. Uh, absolutely right, yeah. and especially yeah. now in this day and age, is you yeah. you have the cell phone, and it, what you if you if you really watch out for it. You know, you can do an experiment is most people from the second we wake up to the second we go to sleep, we're inundated by external stimuli mm -hmm. from the cell phone to the music, to the clock radio, to your, your car, whatever. Mm -hmm. And to, to be alone, truly alone is a special thing. And it's, it's an acquired skill. And like in all my training, uh, I always train alone. I've never trained with, with anyone else besides if I go on a, you know, an extended you know, climbing, uh, like when I was in Chamonix, I'd, I climbed with the coach, stuff like that. But all my, all my day to day training is always alone. No music, no podcast, no nothing. Really? It's just, it's just quiet Damn, okay. alone time. And it's just so doing that for the last year and a half, it's just, it's just kind of just slow, subtle conditioning where I've just, I've gotten used to it to where now, honestly, if I'm in the middle of say a cardio session, uh, and I'm on a gym because it's just pouring down rain or, you know, something like that, or I don't want to go out for the day, whatever is if I put a podcast on now or music on now, it actually messes me up and it makes time seem slower to me because, mm. you know, cons time's just a concept and, and, uh, and it's all relative to where if I put something on now and I have an external stimuli, it drives me crazy. And I, I honestly, I can't even listen to the music or listen to the podcast. So it's just, I think that's part of the conditioning of it as well, but that's one of the challenges I enjoy about it. And we're talking about is there is a, the physical component. But it's all the it's the all these other elements that are coming into this that I just I found fi uh, I find fascinating, mm -hmm. and I find even just as challenging, if not more challenging, than the physical elements. And forcing myself to be alone, and that enabling me to go to these places in my mind that I've never been to before, and finding out things about myself that I was never even aware of. You know, you, you'd be amazed in the middle of climbs, stuff will come up when I was four years old. You know that that apparently is still processing. Oh, absolutely. You know, like, somewhere you in know, there. It's, it, it, because you bring that up, we were talking about Kokoro earlier, right? Yeah. Like about this 53, 54 hour uh, event that are military, the kind of like simulation of, of Hell Week. And uh, and I, I did twenty X. I didn't do that, but my friends were saying, you know, once you're so deep into it, uh, you haven't slept. You've you know, you're so fatigued. And mostly, it's a mental game. Yeah. Physically, it's very challenging, but it's not something that you just cannot like. You know, look if if, if I say a deadlift 600 pounds, you might be like, oh, man, I can't do that. Right. No, if I put a gun to your head, you still can't do exactly, that. Exactly, right? yeah. But like some, you know, conditioning type, like grit through it type shit, you can. You can keep going. You can keep going way beyond right. when you think you can't go anymore, you know? And, and so like these guys were explaining like that, you know, you know, it's like day three pretty much, you know, they haven't slept. It's the middle of the night. They're seeing fucking Teletubbies oh, like yeah. run out the woods. Yeah. Like just hallucinating yeah. then you know then something comes up there's just like some trauma from the past and they're dealing with it i mean it really is it's, it's almost like you strip away all the bullshit to have to be able to deal with this yeah. stuff and and 
I feel like, I mean, I, me personally, I'm a huge fan of nature, right? I, I, nature to me is, uh, I don't know, it's similar to meditation, right? I can walk through nature by myself and it's meditative. Right. Um, it, but at the same time, like I said, when you're in the wilderness with nothing else, like sometimes you have to deal with your shit. And uh -huh. when there's no podcast, there's no music, there's no, right? You're alone with yourself and you have to deal with who you are. I right? tell you what, what really got me started on that, it's, it's, that's always been something of interest to me, you know, mm -hmm. in, in psychological behaviors and psychology and mental performance has always been something I've been, been interested in. But when I went to Nepal, uh, a friend of mine, a real good friend, asked me if I was going to take a journal on the trip. I was like, I'm not a 10 year old, you know, <laughs> middle school girl. I don't journal. I was like, screw it, I'll take one. And I'm telling you, as I sat there just day and night, and this stuff was just pouring out of me and just journaling and journaling and journaling. And what I came to understand was, even with that, is when you, when you, like mentally, you can get through a couple levels of stuff. You're like, okay, I feel this way. And maybe this is what's causing it. Then maybe mm -hmm. this is what's causing that. So maybe you can get to like two or three levels. But when you start writing this stuff down, You're you can get to like it. to 10 levels. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I thought this was the, 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 what was causing it. Well, maybe what if it's this? It's almost like a logic tree where you mm -hmm. can kind of start building that. And that's what really kind of got me even more and more turned on to this kind of stuff. And especially being alone and all the things that it enabled me to kind of get re in touch with. It's we we kind of joke Jablonski and I do about this is going far to go deep because it's like the the further I go laterally oh, yeah, the, the deeper, deeper I'm going, going uh, yeah. go internally and you know what that's I think is it's true I mean you're obviously taking this to a whole nother extreme um, but like I, I was a huge fan of Anthony Bourdain yeah you know, still am and you know what he would say is like when when you travel you travel within exactly right? like yeah you're traveling within I, I feel like when you add challenge into that like I I think that actually kind of accelerates that whole quote you know. Yeah. It's, It's like you're going up a mountain, but actually you're going deep inside the mountain. Well, I, you know I, mean? I tell you, taking yeah. that and kind of tying it back to what we were talking to a second ago is, is because I mean, I, I travel a lot now because of, you know, training and I'm in different cultures and areas where a lot of times I don't speak the language. And being in these places, especially when you can't speak the language, you have to give up control and give up power a lot of times in situations and allow situations to develop more organically where you're not in control. Like if I'm here, I can control things because I can speak to people. Mm -hmm. I know the way systems work. I have currency, I, all this kind of stuff. And when you in other places, whether it's, you know, you're traveling a different culture or you're on a mountain or you're in the middle of the ocean where you can't control everything and you have to give up. And you, it's almost say that, that, that old saying, there's strength and surrender, where you have to have that flexibility built into it and how much it helps you just kind of grow and reconnect as well. And that's been part of this process. Man, that's, <laughs> so you bring up a lot of stuff. I always try to, you know, when you share stuff and like kind of pull out a lesson because, you know, the whole surrender part, you know, I, I know for me, you know, I, I grew up in, you know, Yugoslavia, socialism, communism. It's like, you got to be fucking tough, blue collar, all that yeah. good stuff. And for me after, you know, was, we were talking about earlier about being married and then divorced. And, you know, afterwards is when like probably about two years that I was, I surrendered and went like yeah. sought help and said, Hey dude, I need fucking fucked. You know, I'm yeah. fucked up. In and my how head. hard that is. Man. Oh my God. Like it's the hardest thing. I mean like, Hey, make me train all day and fight and like all that shit's easy. Easy. But to ask for help and surrender, like that's hard, but that's strength. Yeah. And that's where you get the big breakthroughs. And I think you're absolutely right. Like, When you put yourself in these environments, sometimes like there's no like it forces you to surrender. It's right. like, dude, you you can fight, but it doesn't matter. Like right. you're you're going to have to adapt. You have to let go. And when you let go, you grow. I mean, you yeah. you do, you know. And so uh it, it's so intriguing because let me ask you this. I mean, because most people can't, you know, like if they're hearing this, they're like, Well shit, I'm not gonna do that. Right. But 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 I see a parallel with the things that you're saying, how you know somebody can like I don't know. The challenge might be going a two hour hike exactly. you know, or yeah. go on a, uh, I don't know, for somebody that's done that, like, hey, go on an overnighter on a 14,000 foot or go like just like push yourself. Right. Because I've, I've always found that like my biggest breakthroughs have happened, you know, when I really challenge myself physically or mentally. Uh, and I, I mean, I love the idea, like I said, of uh, like travel and specifically like nature for me are, are, are massive. Right. Like, I mean. Me and Faruja, which you know, you know Jay, obviously mm -hmm. one of my, my best friends, and and uh, and Jay Jablonski, and you know, we made like this commitment that every year we're going to do at least one national park. We just came, came back from uh, Wyoming, the Grand Tetons. We're out there hiking and doing yeah. stuff. We're in this is the trip Lake. I didn't get invited on, right? Correct. This, this is okay. the one. I, I make sure I had the right one. I have to bring it up here on <laughs> camera. So it's not Afterwards, like, yeah. Like just like shh. <laughs> 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 But um. You know, and, 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 and like I've been like I grew up, I mean, Slovenia is 51 percent woods and mountains like it's, you know, so I grew up hiking. And I think part of that 
I also do. I also think that there's something about, you know, if you look at us like homo sapiens, I mean, for how long we like, you know, agriculture and, and communities have only been around for that long before that, like we were in nature all right. the time for basically tens of hundreds of thousands of years right. that I feel like when you go to nature, you kind of go back to, it's almost like your home, you know, yeah. that's how I, that's how I feel. And that's how I take it. So I think there's, there's, um, you know, benefits to that, but like, what would you say, you know, for a, a person that's listening that, you know, this might feel like something that's so extreme. It's like, ah, I'm, I don't, cause you know what people do It's like, right. well, I, I, that's not for me. Like that's so hardcore, but like, what are some things that they, that, that a person can do to challenge themselves to bring out, like I said, the philosophy that you started with, right? To stretch yourself to, uh, I mean, it's self-personal development, you know, that may not be, you know, uh, breaking seven records, but but that in their, you know, personal lives they can shoot for that will kind of kind of elicit that same change. Yeah, I guess, no, look, you know? I, think, I think that's a great question, and that's something that I, that I discuss with people a fair amount. And what's important to understand is, you know, I'm not a professional endurance athlete. I was a 40-year-old investment banker that for years and years and years worked 80 to 100 hours a week in an office. I had zero mountain climbing experience. I had zero endurance experience. Anything over 200 yards, screw that. That's not what I'm built for. You know, in, in, in less than three years, I've gone from that to trying to set seven world records in endurance, you know, endurance related activities. So it, it's not, it's, it's something that, that anybody, honestly, it, you hear this a lot and you're like, oh, that's not true. But if I can do this, and go from 242 pounds to 200 pounds, you know, I've lost 40 pounds, I'm losing another 10 pounds. If I can do this at 40 years old with no endurance you know, background whatsoever, really anybody can do it. It's simply a matter of understanding what you wanna do, why you wanna do it, because you've gotta have your motivation uh, yeah, and yeah. purpose extremely clear Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of, then it's slowly put in place. Then how can I, I know what I want to do. I know why I want to do it. Then how can I go about doing it? Then it's about surrounding yourself with the right team, with the right people, the right programs, you know, you learn on your own, you know, that type of thing. But to your question is we talked a little bit earlier is the purpose here is not to get people to go out and climb 20,000 foot mountains but rather to get them to draw parallels between themselves and what our athletes are doing mm -hmm. to where if they see me climb Mount Everest, maybe to your point is they go out and they climb a 5,000 foot mountain. It's just getting out of the house. Uh, the, the problem is with this in this day and age, the more connected we're getting, the more disconnected we're getting, not only from each other, you know, where I'm sitting there and I'm talking to my 5,000 friends by myself at house, but we get, we get disconnected from ourselves. You know, we don't know who we are and what really motivates us and what really drives us. And that's something that we're trying to do here. But we've gotten too much of a focus on being comfortable all the time. It's I go in. I Hell turn, yes. I turn the air conditioning on. I got the music on. I'm sitting in a yeah. comfy chair. I got plenty of food. I got this. I, I have no real wants or desires or needs because I'm comfortable all the time. Mm -hmm. And what I found is when I feel my best is not when I'm most comfortable, but when I when I'm pushing Sweet. myself and I'm growing and I'm, and I'm achieving things that it's kind of like that, that and I, I call it kind of bathe in the fire or something I tell my coaches a lot is I've got to get the evil out of me. I got to go get the evil out of me today because John, you remember John coffee. Oh yeah. yeah. The Green Mile? Oh yeah. I feel like when you're doing that, like you're getting all this shit. Out it is. I'll tell you, that's what it feels. I'm telling you when I go in there, when I work, le go through a big leg workout and I mean, I'm just on the floor and I'm done. I never feel better in it's my life. I think thing, there's yeah. something spiritual about it. And I'm Great. not trying to sound like a meathead. No, no. So whether it's, it's training in the gym or when I go onto the mountain and I'm climbing for five hours with a 60 pound pack and I get done and I'm thoroughly exhausted, I never feel better. Cause I, in my mind, I got that evil out as I, as I, I pushed myself to that point where I was reconnected with myself. You know what I mean? And, and it, my, my intent was clear and my purpose was clear. And that there's that moment of clarity and to where you're not BSing yourself, you're not BSing others. And it's just, that's how you, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it now, but that's how you grow. Yeah. And the most important part is, is not just for us, is I'm not doing this just for me, is I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for everyone watching and listening. I'm doing it for my friends. I'm doing it for my community because when I'm living my best purposeful life is I'm a better person. So therefore I'm uplifting everyone around me mm. because we're not in this, we're all in this together. None of us are singular. And we all impact others. So I owe it not only to myself, but I owe it to you to perform at my best. I owe it to my father and my mother to perform at my best. I owe it to somebody that I'm standing next with, you know, next to line two at McDonald's to perform at my best. And they owe it to me 
because we all lift each other together. You know, I think we all have that responsibility. Man, there are so many points. I was trying to like make sure I'm. Uh, no, sorry, I got, no, no, I no, 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 I, no. Actually, there. I didn't. I, I, that's great because my thing is that you were bringing up so many good things that I, I want to make almost bullet point them. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, n- but not stop listening to you because yeah. and, and, that's what a lot of people do. Like, this is what I'm going to say nice. Um, but, you know, starting off with like, look, I absolutely think that like our, you know, down on the wall is like one of my favorite quotes, which is from, you know, uh, Roosevelt, which is from the man in arena. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and which is like, man, like that, you know, striving to achieve, you know, str- struggling to when you're you're growing. Like that's that's achievement. Like right. that's. When you feel the most successful, even if you fail, right? Because failure is just really it's a, part of a, it. Part of it. If you, you know? haven't failed, you haven't tried. You haven't tried. It's and, that simple. And it's like, and if you and you've never failed and stuff is comfortable, that's what I call the 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 life of quiet desperation. Which you know, I've I've had that in my life, right? When you're when you're there's something missing. Like you've achieved some stuff, you know, you got some things, but there's something missing. And and I think that's the gr- a great point that like you have to, you know, and of course there's a balance, right? If you're always just crushing yourself. Uh, you know, sometimes there's times for back off, but like in general, like in our life, there's different areas of our life. You know, there's personal relationships, there's there's finances, there's uh, physical, there's mental, there's emotional, there's all these things. But if we're striving to be our best self, like usually, even if times are hard, we're fulfilled. Right. Right. That was the second thing you brought up. Like you got to do it for something that matters. Like you, you know, like nobody's nobody's doing some really hard shit with what I call the anchor. And so it's so relatable to when we get clients in the gym, and it's like. If it's a very surface like motivation, when tough the timings get it's hard, they're gonna, gonna quit. It's yeah. not gonna last. So I call this the anchor. Like your anchor's gotta be fucking deep rooted. And if it is, you know, like and, and I'll give you a, a story and an example of of a parent that I that, you know, it it's so clear to me, like this is like probably six years ago, where where a lady said, Hey, look, like I, you know, because I said, Well, what made you reach out to us? And it's like sometimes you have to like dig a little bit and whatnot. And she was like, I tried to run after my son, he was running to the freeway. I got so tired I couldn't catch him. That's good. One. You tell, tell me That's a fucking. Good one. You tell me, yeah. you know, uh, man. Is, uh, tell me a reason that like you're yeah. not like you know what? I'll ne- I never want to feel that again, right? You got to anchor. T- times get hard. You're gonna go back to that. Fuck that. Like uh, you know. So you got to find that why. You got to find that anchor. It's so 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 important. And then you know, and and, and I, the other way I call it is that you you know because you're you're actually going to climb Everest right. out of many other different right. things. But I say like, what's your Everest? You know, I ask clients, well, what is your Everest, man? Cause like my as a coach, my job I'm I'm the Sherpa, right? right? I'm I'm guiding you most of the time. Sometimes I'm pulling you. Sometimes I'm pushing you, and yeah. challenging you. But most of the time I'm guiding you because you got to make it. You got to right. have your own kind of fire inside that anchor that you have. And so it's such a relevant analogy because it's like, hey, maybe you're not gonna climb that Everest, the real Everest, but you got your own Everest. Exactly. And what is your own Everest? You know, and 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 you guess what? When you're climbing that Everest, man, there's gonna be times that you're gonna fucking want to quit. There's going to be times that it's going to be challenging and there's going to be times that like, you know, like you're literally you're going to have to give it like you're going to have to burst through that glass ceiling yeah. that you believe of what you can do. And, and it's so relevant. And like, you know, that might be, hey, losing 50 pounds. It might be uh, completing a marathon. It might be I don't know. It might be like I said, it might be something outside of the right. scope of the physical. Right. Um, but it's there. And then the last thing that you mentioned is like surround yourself with the right team. I mean, I mean, how relevant is that to I mean, we talked about business and it's like surround yourself with the right team. Uh, you, you want to achieve something insane like this, surround yourself with the right, right. team. You want to, uh, you know, lose weight for good, surround yourself with the right team. Like, and who are you? Do- like, you're doing it for the people. Like, right. I, if you're doing it just for yourself and you're like, fuck, I don't care about anybody else. I just got to get this. You're I promise you, you're in the wrong yeah. path. And I promise you, you're going to burn somewhere it won't along stick. the line. Yeah. No, it won't stick. No. You know what I mean? Because like doing it together, and I just call it the win-win, you know, like the, like, man, if I'm doing something, I want everybody around me to win. Yeah. Like, and, and sometimes that means I'm making myself better. So I'm going to help you get better. And that's a win. Yeah. You know, I want you to be like, man, that guy, like every time I'm around him, like, fuck, he, made, he challenges me a little bit. He shows me something. He makes me better. Like, I want to be that person. Right. right. But to be that person, I have to develop myself. You have to have that. Gen- you have to be genuine. You yeah, can't yeah, yeah. BS that. No, you nah. can't. Be, it's, it's, it's sooner like that. That gets yeah. found out real quick. Yeah. You know, that yeah, gets found out real quick. But you know what I wanted to also touch on is like uh, that we didn't. You know, you spent because because th- I think this is important. Like you had a big re- kind of revelation. Can I say something before we do that? Something will forget because because no, no, you got me. You got me like ten things right there. <laughs> I'm not gonna remember these. It's uh, so the two of them is 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 you know you talked about for a second. Yeah, you know, I hear this a lot from people. Is you know what's your why? What's your why? What's mm-hmm. your why? And I I look at it differently. Is I look at it and say what's your have? Is and what I mean by that is 
is what is it that you have to do? Not why am I doing something, but what do I have to do? And where I get that from is, and this kind of this is kind of paraphrasing a verse out of the Bible that says, if you let out what's inside of you, what's inside of you will save you. If you don't let out let out what's inside of you, what's inside of you will destroy you. Mm. It's like, what is this thing that's inside of you that you have to get out of you? And if you don't, it'll just eat you alive a little day by day by day. And that's kind of where this comes to for me is, is this, this feels like my have. Because I know what it feels like to go through 40 years and to feel like you're dying a little bit every mm-hmm. single day. And you feel this emptiness and loneliness and this desperation just growing inside of you to where it's that thing you're not getting it out of you. You right, know what I mean? And, that's- and, and that's kind of how I look at it to where I go from that have or from the why to the have. Like, I don't want to just do this. It's like I have to because if I mm-hmm. don't do this, I literally feel like I'm dying every day. It's like I don't have that's, oxygen. That's that's a great point, man. It, it it brings me back to this book that I love. I actually probably reread it every year, at least every couple of years. It's called Die Empty. Okay. You know, and it's and it's one of those, you know, analogies that I ask I ask people to say, hey, you know, with, with kids when we have a man and we mentor them, I say, hey, what's the most valuable real estate in the world? You know, and everybody's like, Manhattan, uh, all this other shit. I'm like, nope. Like it's the it's the graveyard because it's filled with people's dreams and ideas and potential yeah. and it was buried with them. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and so die empty means it's like, man, when I die, man, I, I want to die empty. I yeah. wanna, and like, that's it. Like I want, I want everything inside out. to be out. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and, and, uh, and I, I think that's true. I do, you know, I, I, I think a lot of people do. And I hope, you know, I hope that like something like this conversation, this podcast spurs somebody to me, it's a huge success. If somebody listening is like, fuck, like, I'm feeling that I'm going to do something about right. it. Like if one person does it, I'm like, uh, th- you know, I'm, I'm happy about that. And you know, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Now I was going to say is, is, you know, kind of relating that to, to this podcast. Like when I started listening to, to podcasts or talking to coaches and all this stuff, when I was younger, mm-hmm. it's like, how many sets, how many reps, what's the rest <laughs> period? What's this? How much protein? How And you're yeah. looking for this, you're looking for this little uh, exact little formula, mm-hmm. you know, right? And you and I are talking about if somebody does 10 sets of 10, I'll do 20 sets of 10 because that's better. But what you find out is, is you can do all that stuff when you're young and build a base and all that. But when you get deeper and deeper into it, it's it's bigger than that. Mm-hmm. And the problem is like you listen to a lot of podcasts or whatever, and it gets, it gets too either too granular or too heady. And you're like, no, just give me the exact formula. And you're like, that's not it. It's, it, not it, it, it's yeah. something when you're trying to talk about performing at a higher level, it goes beyond sets and reps and training schemes and this and this and this. It's about what you and I are talking about now. It's about what's your motivation, what's Absolutely. your driver, what are you trying to accomplish? And then tying that back into about the team is I, it took me a long time to learn that. And I'm embarrassed to say, but it, but it did because I always thought the scope of, you know, of a true hard man is that I can do this on my own. I don't need anybody else. And what I've come to understand is you don't do anything alone. Nothing. And anything yeah. you're going to try to do alone, if you bring in the right team around you, you're going to do it 10 times better. Absolutely. And you'll have, you'll have better performance. You'll have better impact on others. So it, it's about if, if you don't have a team around you, if you're trying to do it all by yourself, you're going down the wrong path. You're, you're, you're wasting your time. And whatever result you do get is not going to be any near result that you could have gotten if you had that right team around you. Like when I brought, you know, Jay Jablonski on, a good friend of ours, is Jay's, Jay has been my counselor. He's been my brother. He's been there and listened to me cry. He's listened to me, you know, everything in the world. And I wouldn't be the man that I am without him in my life. Mm-hmm. And then he's introduced me to you. Being around you just a little bit has made me a better man. And it's just like it's having that team around you is going to take anything you're going to do by yourself. I mean, and just multiply it more times than you'd ever know. It's, it's really, honestly, it's, it's so difficult to even put in words until you don't experience it, yeah. right? Because, it, you know, once you kind of let the ego go, and like, all right, look, I don't know. This guy's maybe better at me at this. I'm going to invite this person into, you know, or I'm going to join this mastermind and get this coach or whatever it is, yeah. right? Because it does take that that whole surrender that we talked yeah. about. Like, ah, you know, maybe. Guess maybe, what? I'm not the best at everything. I don't know everything, everything right? Yeah. Like, and, it's, and, it, and it is like this first. But but then you're like, oh, shit. Like this whole world that I've been missing where it's like, you know, I, it's like I love I love Marvel and I love like comic books and, and superheroes. And I'm like, I mean, it's like Avenger type yeah. shit where it's like Megatron, right? Like you put it together and it's bigger than some of its parts. And I think that's, you know, that's how really it comes down to when you find the, the right group of people 
to surround yourself with that all, did, they it just elevate you. Dude, you I'm know? telling you, when I walked into your place today, and this was the first time I've ever been in here, mm-hmm. my energy lifted, you know, threefold. It's you, you've built such an impressive platform here with such good people here. As soon as I walked into this place, I just, I felt better. I felt ready to go. I, I mean, my joints didn't hurt as much. It is, you could feel this positive energy just radiating out of this building. And it's just, and once, you, it, once you're, and I'm telling you, you ought to be very, you know, um, not impressed, but it's, you, you've built something here that's so impressive. You know what I mean? And that you can, you can actually feel it when you walk in the building. And once you kind of get more and more dialed into that and you're around those right people, you can feel when you're in a good place and you can feel when you're oh in God. a negative Man, place. That, and you know, the, the, the drive behind, I mean, building this place and everything else. So I've, I've studied environments a ton, right? Like, and how I'm, the, the fastest way to, uh, I would say, help change the behaviors of a human being is to change your environment. Yeah. The people they're around, the places they go. I mean, it's a simple, you know, when you look at food, it's like, hey, do I go to the fast food spot or do I go to the organic farm to table spot? Listen, just the choices are going to be different. Like, you're going to make a different decision, right? right? Am I around people that are like, ah, you can't fucking do that? Or you're around people that are like, hey, I challenge you to do this thing. Right. Like, you can do it. I believe in you, right? Like, those two fucking completely different, even internally, right? And, and of course, like, you have to internally change. But the environment, like, you know, it's like that saying, like, we shape our tools and our tools shape us. Well, guess what? We usually usually manipulate our environments and environments shape us. So you can manipulate those things. And for for me, that means a lot of stuff. The places you go, the things you hear, the things you read, who you're around. And for Vigor, I was like, well, when people come in here, I want that environment to be like helping them become the greatest version of themselves from the food to the to the, you know, stuff on the walls where it's like, oh, I'm having a shitty day. And like. You see Ali knocking out Superman, right. like, fuck it, you know, impossible is nothing, right? Like, can you go on? It does. It makes you, like, it gives you a different frame it of does. mind. And, like, and I always think, like, that's, you know, I read, I've read, I've been a voracious reader for a long time. I read two books a week, you know, and I told people, I'm, I will read stuff that makes me see a different focus, the positive focus, the focus that takes me forward, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I think that that's not just something that, like, we have, con- like, once again, control, right? Like, yeah, we can't control everything, but, man, there's so much that we can control, and hey, if somebody in your life is like pulling you down, like you can control about the amount of time you spend with them, right? Right? Like you can. And so I think that's so powerful. And you know what? Like what I wanted to be, to to talk about environments and stuff like that because I th- I think this is for a lot of people listening. I think this will be powerful. Like when you went into you know what what was the choice for you to go even into investment banking and like a, what you know because you were successful with right. it. And I think there's the things that you're talking about probably made you successful in that area. But at what point in time, like, first of all, as you're building that career and you're doing well, like, do you go like this is enough? Like, because this is an important conversation for maybe somebody that's, uh, you know, 23. Right. Right. Like, do, you know, what do they pick and choose? Where do they go? Like, uh, you know, how? like what did it do for you? Do you regret it? Do you not regret it? Like th- that whole transition of going through that and then going like, hey, you know what? Like, I don't feel like I have a purpose. So I'm going to go and do this. Right. You know what I mean? Like, tell me a little bit about that, because I'm, I'm intrigued by this, but I think it's important. Like, I always like, you know what I love? I love studying stuff that, um, like, for instance, if, if I'm going through a struggle, guess what I want to read about and who I want to learn from? I want to learn from the person that went through that struggle, and I want to see how they overcome it. Right. Like, that's, that's the greatest way of learning, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm very intrigued, at, like, by that. Like, what was that switch that flipped for you? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. how did you get there? You know, it's... That's a good question. And, and looking back on it now, it look, there, there's two, I think there's two ways to look at it is to do what's, what's going to fulfill you and then do something that's going to provide you a certain level of say financial and professional certainty. Mm-hmm. And that's what you're, you're weighing. Cause mm-hmm. look, if, if I could go out and, you know, play with dogs all day, that'd be, that'd be nice. It'd be fun, but it's not going to provide me that certain level. So I think, I think there's a time there's a time to reap and there's a time to sow, mm-hmm. right? And when, when you're in your early 20s, when I got into banking, the reason I got into banking, because it, it's a great kind of uh, forerunner into a lot of different fields in, in finance. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of a, a great general entryway into that. You can go out and do a million different things. So I wanted, I wanted that exposure to give me the opportunity to do other things in that sector, in those various sectors, you know, if I could get it. So the first four years, you know, I was working 80 to 100 hours a week. I mean, investment banking as an analyst is a notoriously difficult program where you're, I can't tell you how many times, you know, I worked all night or, I mean, there was a time where I went into work on Tuesday. I didn't go home until Friday. I was up for 
74 hours with no sleep, no nothing. Wow. I mean, obviously that's an extreme, yeah. but that's just kind of my personality and shit needed to get done. Yep. And when yep. stuff needs to get done, I don't want to hear why it didn't get done. I'm going to tell you it got done. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there, there are times in your life where you need to do that to where maybe it's not mm -hmm. fulfilling your purpose, but it's going to enable you to be better positioned to fulfill your purpose you know, down the road because it's helping you build a base or gain experience or gain connections, you know, something like that. So I think when you're younger, that's something you can focus on a little bit more, but I think it needs to be in the area where you, where it's something that innately you feel inside of you that fulfills you. Something that I should have done a better job of when I was younger is understanding what really drives me, what motivates me and to look down, down the line and see what my long-term purpose is. And then to start, then to kind of start working my way backwards. Instead, I had more of an immediate focus, mm -hmm. and I was just kind of head down, kind of plowing through it, to where I, I mean, I, I really am embarrassed to say I didn't understand my purpose and my passion until I was forty years old. And honestly, I feel that that that's almost a sin on my part because I could have been a better person, working with better purpose a lot earlier, uh, to ultimately live a better life and to impact people in a more meaningful way sooner than I did. So I think me uh, not doing that let me down a little bit, it let you down a little bit, let everyone down a little bit. So long, long way of saying is what I would say is understand what your primary purpose and drivers are. Look at that long-term picture about what you want to do and then start focusing on the immediate stuff. But you've got to understand that not every day is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. It might, and it might be two years. It might be three years. It might be you know, I really don't want to do this, but this is going to give me a base and open up opportunities that I can later apply to go in the direction I want to go. And I, I'm glad to see, I'm glad I asked the question because one thing, like I always say, I get a lot of people, I'm sure you probably get a lot of people asking you like, Hey, how do you find your purpose? You know? And I say, you don't, you don't find purpose. You forge purpose. Yeah. You, know, you forge it and you do stuff and you do hard shit. And then as you're doing it, you figure shit if you out. You just sit back and say, what's my purpose? Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, Never. I read this book. I was Never. on my couch yeah. and I read it. And I was like, I know what I, you know, it's yeah. like, it just doesn't have like, no. Hey, if you asked me when I was any time from the age of, you know, 11 to 24, you know, like what's your, oh, I haven't played an NBA. Yeah. That's it. Like I'm going to be, a, you know, that's it. Professional sports, da, 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 you know, like that. So, and then once again, like I had to go through that and like learn and fail a shit ton to where it led me to fitness, yeah. right? And then I was building a, f and then even with fitness, it's like, if you ask me like, what's your purpose? It would have been way different than what it is now. Now right. I'm like, you know, so much of it is like, I want to help change Renton, the industry, you know, social impact. Right. Like some of the stuff we're working on, I feel is incredible and will change a lot of stuff, right? But once again, you asked me that seven years ago, eight years ago, like I wouldn't tell you that because yeah. I had to forge yeah. to keep chipping away at like this, right? You, how do you know? This is, this, is, this is my uh, the thing that I think about, right? You don't know about a clearer goal until you don't have more data. You get more data through work, through learning, through doing, like through going, you know, uh, ah, this shit is not for me. Yeah. You know, Leonardo da Vinci didn't finish two thirds of his, of his sculptures. You yeah. know what I mean? Like people don't like, you know, I always like studying like incredible people. And it's like, he would do stuff and be like, ah, fuck this. Like that's yeah. literally what he did, you know, because everybody's like, oh, well, you know, you got to do this and that. Like, no, like you, you learn through doing stuff. You know, you go and you intern and you're like, oh, I learned a bunch of stuff, but this is not for me. And you go to the next thing and eventually you chip away and you forge that purpose. Right. And that's why I'm glad you, but you, you know, you said like, hey, at the beginning, what you're going to work your ass off and like, you're going to do stuff. And, you know, at that point in time, maybe purpose for some people is like, hey, look, I got to have financial security. Right. right. But as you're forging through that, you're like, hmm, okay, there's more to this. Right. You know, let me, let me go down this route. Yeah. Right. So I, I, I say that because um, I, I want to inspire people, one, to take more risks and, and work their ass off. And like, you know what, if you got a gut feeling, like go with it and go with a different direction. And, you know, and, and I think that's how you find purpose faster. Right. It's not like waiting around for shit and like trying to like to let something like click. But it's like you got to work through these layers of purpose to get to the thing that you really right. want to do. Um, but that, that's why I wanted to ask you that, you yeah. know, cause I always like to get the insight of where you were at and what you did in, uh, well, I, tell you, you, I think something that's, and I don't, I'm trying to mean cut you off. I think something that's, that's very important to understand where a lot of people get confused. And I did for, for a while, there's a difference between what you do and who you are mm -hmm. between what you do, you know, to put a roof over your head and what your purpose is. 
you know, if, for example, if someone were to look at you like, oh, he's, he's, and I'm not discounting this, he's, he's a trainer. He, he helps people work out, helps people lose weight, helps people feel better, all that. But your purpose, like you just mentioned, is so much more than that. You know what I mean? So someone, yep. could, someone could be a teacher or they could be an investment banker or they can be a trainer of some sort, but their purpose is to elevate their communities. Their purpose yes. is to whatever, whatever. So it, it's people need to be under, to understand, don't get it confused between what you do and why you're doing it. Those mm -hmm. are two completely different things a lot of times that I think a lot of people kind of uh, unfortunately mix together and kind of get lost. And I think what, you know, why you're doing it helps with what you do because yeah. It helps you be better at it. Like, I, you know, I want to be the best in the world at the stuff that I do because I know, like, because the purpose is so clear. It's kind of like that, you know, the story of, uh, I can't remember where I heard this one, but, you know, a person comes along and there's people, like, putting bricks on top of each other, right? And, and he goes, like, hey, what are you doing? It's like, ah, leave me alone. Like, I'm just putting a brick on top of another brick, right? Okay, ask the other person. It's like, oh, I'm building a wall, right? And the third person says, well, shit, I'm building the most beautiful cathedral there ever was, right? They're all doing the same job. But one person like has this big purpose and right. vision of what it's going to be. And like, so I, that's how I look at it. I'm like, hey, like, uh, you know, on the granular, I'm coaching people to, you know, go from where they are to where they want to be. But on this bigger picture is like we're affecting. I always say, um, you know, change one man, one woman, you change a family, you change a family, you change a community, you change a community, you change a city. A state, yeah. You know, like, yeah. but it starts with one exactly. man, and woman. Right. Yeah. Like so. But if, if you're just like, oh, I'm just here counting reps and like helping them get stronger, right. like. You're not going to have that gusto, you know what I mean? That like, I mean, I'm, you know, I've been doing this for a long time and like I'm wired every day, you know, caffeine or no caffeine. I'm fucking wired because to me, like I am so like I, I see this bigger thing that we're, we're, you know, a part of, you know, and if, if we do our absolute best and put in our greatest effort, like what you're talking about, you know, and, and even um, you said the logo, you know, we talk about like our past, our future and our present. Like, how can we peak? How can we be our greatest right. self? I mean, it, it's like that's one of the biggest, uh, I would say, things that fulfill happiness in life is, is like doing our best, you mm -hmm. know, like pushing as hard as we can to be the, our, our greatest versions of ourselves. And like, you know what? If you have this bigger kind of picture that, of what we're here for, it, that it helps you become better at your exactly. craft. Yep. You know what I mean? And so, so I think that's very, very important. Um, Gene, where are we at with time, man? See, I want to check in. I, I'm, I'm looking at him through a corner of my <laughs> eye to see if he's sneaking out. He's right. um, but okay, so with, uh, with, with that said, like there, there's a couple of things. What, because my question to you is like, what happens once you complete this? Right. Like what, what, where does Dawson go? Like what's the next thing? Do you have, is there like a fuck, what do I do now? Or, you know, have you already been thinking about it? Like how do you, um, you know, what's the next target? Right. You know what I mean? So yeah, our our my personal goal and our goal as an organization is to build Dawson's Peak to where each year we host multiple expeditions. Yeah, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, have work with a variety of athletes and a variety of third party worthy causes to where all this is is an initial inaugural project for us to build a foundation and a base from which to build, you know, future projects to ultimately raise more money and awareness for other third party groups and worthy causes. You know, I'd, uh, I'd like to work with Jay to where we put a, a real team, you know, a bigger team in place to where we're touring, you know, speaking, you know, books and really help people to a lot of these issues we're talking about here, identify what their purpose is, mm -hmm. how to live with a greater purpose, how to positively impact all those around them. So is we want to build this as an organization to where we ultimately just help impact people, drive people forward, help people grow, have better lives and, you know, ultimately transfer that to others and elevate everyone collectively. That's I know awesome. that's kind of a, a of a heady goal, but as a, as an overall organization, that's our goal. And I think you know what is literally what we just kind of like ended on, which is you're doing it, and like as you're doing it, you're figuring out. Like I'm, I'll promise right. you, like we started doing uh, charity boot camps over ten years ago, right? We've done over six hundred events now, and it took me until last year to I was in a in a, in a mastermind slash mentorship where one of my mentors said. Hey man, like, what if you could do all of the stuff that you're doing just for one organization or for one thing? What would it be? And like in three seconds, I was like, oh, I'd want to do it for local community and for kids, right? And that is what spurred this Vigor Dream program that we're now about to launch, which is essentially like now using this kind of charity foundation within our own walls to drive these scholarship programs for inner city right. kids, right? Low income that that could not afford. Uh, this mentorship program, which is not just fitness, it really is 
almost like accountability, big brother, mm -hmm. like mentorship, you know. Um, and I'm so excited about this because, you know, it, it's almost like this is what I would have wanted when I was, uh, you know, 14, 18, when I was the biggest fucking knucklehead mm -hmm. to guide me in a different direction. You know, what I mean? and, and, and instead of like, you know, writing checks is great. Uh, but for me, I'm a people person. I'm a, I'm a, to me, mentorship and coaching is what I do. And so I, I, like, I feel like I get the, the biggest fulfillment and impact of seeing somebody that I'm coaching and in change, you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, where I'm not saying there's anything wrong. I mean, we've, we've, we've donated over a hundred thousand dollars, uh, you know, to different organizations, tons of food, clothes. I mean, you name it. But to me, that's exciting. It's exciting to see, you know, little Kenny is like, that was, you know, going this way. And then through, you know, our program, like they turn around and like they, they become different and then they start influencing everybody else right. around them. And then every year, you know, going from tens and tens of kids to hundreds to then my goal is to help small businesses put in place these uh, for profit programs, mm -hmm. what I call evolved enterprise. And uh, like this is, you know, I, I kind of get like wired when I talk about this because um, I'm, I'm applying for a TEDx talk because I feel like if small businesses did this, it would change the country. Right. There's 24 million small businesses in America, 24 million. Right. Right. Like you, you think about these numbers and you go, you know, most uh, many small businesses fail, um, unfortunately. And, you know, but most don't have any type of social impact. And because a lot of times when you when we're not doing great, you're like, oh, well, that's just more work. That's not going to help right. us. But my goal is to show people that, like, not only can this help the business is going to help the community. Right. And if you think about the numbers, like, like check this out, this is fucking crazy. 20%, if you took 20% of all small business, which is 4.8 million, what if it, it, each one of those businesses affected 10 kids? That's 48 million kids. Like, you see what I'm saying? Right. Like, no, yeah. It's like a ripple that creates an absolutely massive wave, you know? So that's part of, like, my, the other side of, because I love fitness. I love, I love what we do, and, and I feel it's one of the greatest things that you can do as far as a career goes. But on the other side is, like, we're also a small business in a local community, and how can we do something that we do for profit, also transfer it to social impact. And I want to make that very successful so that then I can show other people how to do it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but once again, you know, a lot of this stuff is a lot of work, no money, that you know, a lot of struggle, but it has purpose. Exactly. You know, it has, has something meaningful behind it. And, um, you know, and, and just like you said, well, you know, I'm doing this and then like we're going to keep building and maybe I don't know exactly where it goes because I have to get the, you know, now we're talking about climbing. You get the PK and you go like, oh, look, there's peak B. Exactly. You get the peak B like, shit, there's peak C. You know, like that's how life works. Look, yeah, there's no it, finish line, man. There is no finish and it, line. But it's, that's what makes it fun. Absolutely. Is, is, listen, you're, you're, <clears throat> when you're comfortable, you're not growing. And we're, the reason that we're here is to grow and change. And I think all, all growth is change, but not all change is growth. And that, that's, people get that, you know, conflated a lot. So make sure you're continuously growing Make sure you're going in that in that right direction and then understand that there's never a finish line because there's not supposed to be a finish line and you're not supposed to be comfortable. If you're comfortable, it's fine. If you want to sit on the couch and eat, eat a bag of you know cookies and watch a movie, that's great. I do that from time to time. But if you're constantly comfortable and feel like you've, hey, I'm here, I'm wait, I'm just waiting until I get there, you're 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 in the wrong place, man. Mm -hmm. And you're looking for something that's never gonna be there and you're never gonna be fulfilled. And you've got to understand you've got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable because when you're uncomfortable in the right ways, it means you're growing, it means you're improving, and it means you're, you're going somewhere and hopefully you're helping not only yourself but helping others you know, along the way. Man, fantastic, yeah. dude. I love it. Tell me a little bit more. Like, Where can people find out about you? Where can they find out about Dawson Speak? Where can they find out about this <laughs> amazing adventure that you're going to yeah, go on? Yeah, no, appreciate that. Uh, so the easiest way is just, just www.dawsonspeak.com. And on there you can see all about me, my personal history, about the uh, all the different factor or all the different components of, of the project. You can learn about merging vets and players. You can learn about Hope for the Warriors. Those are our two charitable partners. They're also 501c3s, very reputable, highly recognized, well-known organizations uh, that have been around for some time. They both help veterans transition from military service to civilian service following their time in the military. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, they're receiving 100 percent of the net proceeds that we raise here. That's awesome, man. And then uh, you can donate on that page. There's there's an easy donation button there. And then also uh, just um, uh, at Dawson's Peak on Instagram is the easiest way to, to follow us there. And we've got some big news coming up uh, now. Uh, we'll introduce it probably in about a week about when we're actually getting started. We've selected a climbing partner, climbing company, which we're very excited to, to get out there. 
and uh, you know, speaking with uh, potential sponsors now. So we have a lot of big news coming here in the next couple of weeks. I think awesome. really gets people excited about it. That's great. I'm gonna so I'll put all of those in the show notes, guys. Like so, I'll put all the links in the show notes, obviously. And uh, man, make sure you go and support this. I mean, obviously, like, look, just go read through it. I know we talked about it, but like, read through it because it's pretty nuts. Uh, with that said, uh, man, appreciate you, my brother. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, brother. Great show. Uh, make sure you guys, like I said, check that out. And as always, you already know, look, the, when we get reviews, I appreciate it. I read every single one of them. I can't thank you enough for them. You know, spending time with us, like I said, you're putting your time and energy into it. And a, as with anything else, I, like, if you took something from this, go and apply it. Like, there's no, you're moving forward if you're doing just one thing that you learn here that spurs some excitement, that spurs some motivation. Uh, you know, don't sit back. Like, go and do it. Do it, do it right now. Do something. And if you listen to 52 podcasts a year with, with Vigor Life, you know what? You're going to move forward in that next year. So with that said, I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out, my friends.